everybody. Welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be talking about log profiles, our logarithmic profiles, you know, which are the flat profiles that come in cameras. Any of these tools and techniques will work in Canon, Sony, Panasonic, Nikon, you know, whatever your camera and manufacturer of choice is, these tools and techniques will work on all of it. The only big caveat is you can't use the LET I'm going to be using unless you're a Canon shooter because cameras and sensors and the LUTs that come from manufacturers are made for that camera and sensor. So please don't interchange LUTs with different manufacturers because they're not going to work too well. Sometimes they will, you know, but that's very rare. You know, I'm not going to put a Sony LUT on a Canon or a Canon LUT on a Sony. I'm going to use what comes from the manufacturer or basically make my own. So please don't make that mistake. Whatever camera manufacturer brand that, that you know you are with, please use their LUTs to at least start, and then you can make your own LUTs or get some stylized LUTs, you know, later in the future. So the big thing before we start is you got to get your log profile pretty good to start, which means you know, good exposure, good shutter speed, you know, good color balance. You know, you don't have to be perfect, but the better those you know, exposure triangles or those triangles are, you know, expo exposure, shutter, color balance, the easier it is going to grade your log footage. So I have some things that can definitely help, like a color passport checker, you know, things like this that you can check your white balance and your 18% gray and all that other good stuff is great. You know, that was an X-Rite color passport checker. You know, you can use a set of these little cards, you know, anything will work, you know, and these are relatively cheap. These are like seven bucks from Amazon. And by the way, all the links are in the description for these things. You know, you can get pretty fancy and move up to the color checker video, you know, by putting it under your face here to get proper exposure and white balance, you know, and you can flip it over to the back to get some good white balance if you want. You know, this is the main one I use because I like it a lot. I can not only check my white balance, but I can also check all my colors, and we'll go through all that. It's it's not hard. You just got to get used to it, that's all. You know, or you can use one of these big, flexible, soft targets, you know, that you can fold up and put in your pocket if you want to use for color balance. Any of these tools will work. So I just wanted to, you know, let everybody know up front, doing a little bit of prep work and using tools like this will definitely make it easier to grade your footage once you, once you get in a post or you get in your computer or anything like that. So uh, stand by here and let's move over to the computer and we're gonna go over the log footage that I'm shooting right now. So you can see whatever you know tools and techniques that I use and uh, we'll go through all that and all that good stuff. So uh, stand by and we'll move over, thanks. All right, everybody, so here we are on Final Cut Pro 10. And to give us a little bit more room here, let me make sure I got this window selected. We're going to hit Shift Command 1. Give us a little bit more room. Or you can go up here and go to Window, Show in Workspace, and click off the browser. If you notice, it's Shift Command 1. So just to give us a little more room. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is drag on an effects preset I've already done just to save some time, but I'll show you what it is and all that other good stuff. So here's my YouTube preset for my video. We'll go ahead and throw that on our clip, make sure our clip is selected. And it threw on here a balanced color, a draw mask, a color board, a hue, saturation, curves one, and a custom LUT. Now the bottom four are all over here in the effects. So you can just type the name or find them. They're all in the effects except for the balance color you have to have your clip selected and come over here and select balance color and it'll throw it up there in the video inspector so by the way if you don't know this is the video inspector this is the color inspector audio inspector and this is just the ins info inspector and if you don't see your inspectors you can just go ahead and click on this icon up here and that'll bring up your inspectors I have my effects preset on there, you know, with my five different things I like to do to every clip. So the first thing we're going to do, remember what I said earlier, that we have to make sure that our white balance and our exposure looks good. So we're going to go over here and find our color checker. 
and there's our white balance. Now the first thing we're going to do is go over here to a draw mask and come over to our vector scope. And let me make sure if I can make this a little bigger. Oops, if it helps, I can click. Okay. So ideally, we want the dot in the center, and that means we're perfectly color balanced. So let's go ahead and do a draw mask here on our x right color video checker. This is the back of it. And if you notice, we're definitely off there. So we're going to go up here to balance color, and we don't want to say automatic. We want to make sure this says white balance because we want to select the little eyedropper here and we want to click. And if you notice, I got a circle right in the middle. That means our white balance is spot on. So let's go over here now and go to our waveforms. And then we're going to go ahead and click our draw mask off. Now next we're going to go over here to our color boards. You can add some saturation here if you want. There's two camps that say you should apply saturation before the LUT. And there's another camp that says you should apply saturation after the LUT. Uh, to me, it doesn't make much of a difference because you're going to change the saturation after you apply a LUT anyways. So you, you, you might as well, you know, whatever your preference is, it doesn't really matter. You know, if you want to add a little saturation here, that's fine. If you want to do it after you apply the LUT, that's fine. I haven't noticed that much of a difference. So let's go over to our exposure tab. We want to make sure our shadows are down towards zero and our exposure. We just want to bring down to about 90 as a starting point. And our midtones, uh, they actually don't look too bad there. So we just adjusted them a little bit down. Go ahead and make sure our clip is selected and then go over here to our video inspector. So the next thing we want to do is we can either apply a LUT are if you want to make sure your colors are exact, we can go over here to the other part of the x right video checker and do our little draw mask here. And we're going to go over the color tips over on the x right video checker. So we want to go over to our vector scope. And you can see we have a star started. So, but we want to make sure all those arms of the star are pointed to this part of the vector scope, you know, like this arm goes to magenta and the blue arm goes to blue and so forth and so forth. So let's go ahead and make this bigger so it's easier to see and clean up our lines a little bit here because we don't want any of the garbage. All we want are these color chips. All right. Now, to make our star bigger, there's a couple things we can do. We can go over here to our color board. And here's our saturation, and we can just boost it up. You can see how big our star is now. The thing we can do is go over to the exposure and go over to our highlights. Right now, we're at minus 30. So just remember where it is. And crank this up a little bit. You can see our the arms of the star get bigger. So we want to check our colors. So the thing we can do is we can go back to our video inspector, go back to our hue and saturation curves, and we're going to go to hue versus view first. And we're going to select the eyedropper. First thing we're going to do is check our yellows. So on the control points, it has the primary where you selected for the yellow, and then it has two control points on the side so you don't affect all the colors. It gives you a range of colors to affect. So as I'm clicking these, I'm going to hold a shift key as I go up and down to make sure I don't drift my mouse left and right because I don't want to affect other colors. I just want to affect the color I selected. So I'm going to hold a shift key and move the yellow up and down. So you can see the arm move. And we're pretty much right in yellow, so I didn't have to do much with that. Let's click on our reds. Our reds are a little off, but I like leaving my reds a little bit before because I have such, you know, pale skin that I want to make sure that I don't have like a pink skin or look like a lobster with red skin. So I tend to keep the reds a little bit off to the left of the, of the red here on the vector scope. All right. So we can click on the next one, which is magenta. 
And you can see my magenta is pretty well spot on, but you see how the star arms are split? And what you can do is come over here to the control points on the side and move them a little bit. And there you go. This arm is dead on and the arm isn't spread out. All right, we can check our blues next. Our blues are a little off. Let's move that a little bit. And it looks like our blue arm has a little bit of garbage in it. So we don't want to move that control point. That didn't do anything. Let's move this control point. And go back to the blue. Okay. Let's go over here to our cyan. Our cyan looks pretty well dead on. And if you want, you know, you can see that the arm is a little bit off. Let's see what this what this part of the control point does. That doesn't do anything. Go to the next control point. We can move that over just a little bit. Lastly, we can go with our greens. Our greens don't look too bad. Our control points, eh, we can clean that up a little bit. And there you go. We got a perfectly shaped star. Now, you don't have to do this step if you don't want to, but if you want perfect colors, this is an easy way of doing it. And once you start doing this, you can make this very quick and easy. Now, if you want your saturation to be the same on all the colors, we can go down here to hue versus saturation and do our color pickers. And let's try cyan here. And if you notice, we can include, include, we can make this, the cyan saturation, you know, longer. So they're all the same. We can make sure they're all in the box. So yellow is pretty much in the box. You know, red is pretty much in the box. Magenta is a little short, so we can include, you know, increase the saturation of the magenta. The blue is a little short. We can, you know, increase the blue saturation a little bit. Ooh, a little bit too much. And then we can go down to cyan. Cyan doesn't, uh, we already checked, but it's a little bit off. So we'll move it a little bit. And green, eh, we can maybe increase the saturation of green. So that way, our saturation for all the colors will match. So, you know, as I said before, you don't have to do these steps, but if you want perfect colors, this is a quick way of doing it. And once you get used to doing this, it's, it's actually pretty fast, you know, just a couple clicks and, you know, and all that other good stuff, so. All right, so we got that pretty well cleaned up. So let's go back to our video inspector. First thing we want to do is go over here and go back to our waveforms. We want to put this back to fit. And we want to go back to our color board because stuff was way off. So remember our exposure was down to about minus 30. If I remember correctly, close enough. And our saturation, we want to break down. You can bring it to zero and do it after the LUT. You know, as I said before, I'll already bring it between 20 and 30 because I like doing it before. So no big deal. All right. So on our video inspector, let's go ahead and get rid of this draw mask. And if you notice, our colors are starting to clean up and look good. So some people don't like applying LUT. This actually looks like pretty good. So let's, but... Personally, I like applying a LUT. So these are LUTs I've used in the past. Or you can go over here and choose custom LUT that you've downloaded from Canon in this particular case because these is this video is from a Canon R5 shot in 10-bit 422-4K. And this is the high quality or fine mode. Now, I did shoot in the BT... 709 color space are neutral. So I didn't do the EOS cinema. So we're not going to use any of these cinema LUTs. Remember, so the easiest way to look at these LUTs is 17 grid is for 8-bit. By the way, these are general rules. This is not a hard and fast rule, just a general rule. So 17 grid is for 8-bit. 33 grid is for 10 bit and 65 grid is for 12 bit, which on the Canon R5 is the only thing 12 bit is 8K raw. So we shot in the BT709 color space and we shot in catalog. So we want to go up here and we want to be in BT709 to wide dynamic range, 33 grid, 
full to full, and that's what we want to select. You know, if you shot in 2020, you want to come down here to the BT 2020. Cross your fingers one day where you can select Canon Log 3, but for right now, it's just regular Canon Log. And let's go ahead and open it. It's asking me, do I want to replace it from my quick pick list? Nah, I don't care. And I hit the wrong button, so there we go. So we got our LUT. Now, the reason I do the LUT this way, instead of going over here to the video inspector or the uh, info inspector, and going down and doing a LUT this way, is because if you do a LUT from here, it bakes it into your image. And we don't want to do that. Because if you notice, this is way too strong. So I like doing a custom LUT because you can change the mix. Or you can come over here and change your saturation, exposure, color, and all that other good stuff to kind of fix this. So the first thing I want to do is I want to turn down this LUT maybe just a little bit to about uh, 0 0.7, 0 0.75, somewhere in there, just to turn it down a little bit. And then we're going to go back up to our color board. Now we can go through and fix our shadows we want to make sure we're just like touching the zero there our midtones and our highlights so we want to bring that down a little bit so there we go so this is all you have to do for a basic c log you know color correction or something like that now you can go through and stylize this and put on you know like an orange and teal look or you know whatever look you're looking for in your project I like getting my stuff as accurate as possible because I want everything to look exactly like as I see it. You know, unless I'm doing some sort of short film or something like that, you know, and then I can change everything and, and give it a look or a stylized look. So this is the basic correction for any log out there. Doesn't matter what it is. Canon, Nikon, Sony. You just want to make sure that you choose the appropriate LUT from your manufacturer. All right, everybody. One thing I did forget to show you is if you want to check your skin tones, let's go over here to our vector scope and go over to our draw mask and we'll draw a mask on the skin. So as you can tell, we're a little bit off of the skin tone line and we can come over here to the hue and saturation curves again and we can do our eyedropper up here and we can go ahead and select it that particular color now if you notice it's right on the red so we can bring this down a little bit if we want to be more accurate with our skin tones so we're a little bit closer there on the skin tone line and we can come back out here to the video inspector, get rid of our mask. And that looks a little bit better, not as red as it was, even though I got red lights on it, but my skin tones look a lot better because they were a little bit too red. So I just want to go over that real quick. I did forget to show you that. So that's how to check your skin tones real quick. R, you can actually go over here to the video checker. And once you're over here at the video checker, you can do your draw mask again. So let's go over here to our draw mask. And you can put it over here on the color tones if you want to check your color tones here as well. You know, once again, we can make this bigger if you want. And we can clean up the lines a little bit here. And if you notice, we're a little bit below. And you can, of course, go back here to your hue and saturation, do your eyedropper, and select a skin tone. And maybe we can bring this up or down a little bit. There we go. Get our skin tones right on. And you can go through these other colors if you want, but if you notice, they pretty much go to the same spot. You know, a little bit different, but that's another way of checking your skin tones. And we can go back here to fit and then go over here and turn off our draw mask.
And actually our skin looks a little bit better there. So sorry, I forgot that part. So I just want to make sure I include it. And uh, let's go ahead and get out of this. All right, everybody. So hopefully you enjoyed this little short tutorial on, you know, how, how I grade or edit log or log logarithmic footage or a flat profile. Nah, that's a tongue twister for some reason. You know, hopefully you learned a little bit. You know, if not, it was entertaining. And please be safe out there, especially in these crazy pandemic times. You know, this, this is just crazy and none of us have lived through this before. So I just want to say thank you for watching and for listening, everybody. I greatly appreciate it. Have a great day or night, everybody. Happy shooting. Thank you. Bye.